that one. Yeah. Good evening. Elvis Presley died today. He was 42. Apparently, it was a heart attack. He was found at his home in Memphis, not breathing. His road manager tried to revive him. He failed. A hospital tried to revive him. It failed. His doctor pronounced him dead at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Now, most people think, uh, they think of an Elvis impersonator, they don't think of a, somebody who goes out and sings. They think of somebody that dresses up in a white suit and dyes their hair black and just you know, shows up birthday parties. They don't really think of the, the talent it takes to be an ETA rather than an Elvis impersonator. And I think when people found that out, they respected me a little bit more. But at first, you know, they kind of thought, well, he's crazy. You know? <laughs> Look at the camera. Uh, you look at me. Okay. So that'll be kind of catchy. Yeah, okay. That's what I figured. Uh, well, I work in a full time at a auto shop in Maryville, a tri state, Maryville, Missouri, and uh, I am a quick lane technician. Basically, I work on just about everything short of putting an engine in a car to taking it out. My uh, grandpa was a mechanic and my dad was a mechanic, so it's kind of in my blood. So it's another dream I'd like to pursue. And, well, my main dream right now is if I can make it to that point where I could sing for the rest of my life and you know, pay the bills and <laughs> just you know keep on my feet, and just rely solely on that, I, you know, I would, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to, and my main dream. And I really didn't like music. When I was 13, I started listening to country music, today's country music, and I didn't, I just listened to it because everybody else did. And I really started listening to Johnny Cash when I watched the hit, the movie about him walking the line, and. I saw the Elvis in there and I started listening to his music. Cause everybody said he was the king. You'd heard about him, you heard his songs. And, but when I really sat down and listened to his songs, you could tell the story he was trying to trying to tell. And you know, I just nothing moved me before like listening to an Elvis song. You know, listen to him sing because the singers today in country music and pop music, you know, they sing and then they have a computer mix their voice and make it sound real cool. And he did all this, told his story, made an amazing, amazing music with just his voice. And I think that's what really got me into him. So do you have any other musical people that you look up to as far as their material, their music? I mean, you know, just quite, just about all of them. I mean, Frank Sinatra, Elvis, Johnny Cash, okay. a lot of them, yeah. You know, every singer has their own little style. You know, if you listen to every uh, Frank Sinatra, you know his song just by the music. But Elvis had a different style than everybody else. He had multiple styles. He was just different. And you know, it's that's something I like to be, is different. A lot of times when I sing a song, it's the first time I usually get to sing it is when in a show. And you know, and I don't, it's pretty hard to practice at home, not a real sound environment. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, clock along the town. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, clock along the town. Well, you ain't never caught a rabbit, and you ain't no friend of mine. <laughs>
it's it's kind of a feeling that you you only experience it once. It's so short when you're up there, but you'll remember it forever. Well, the booking is kind of <laughs> funny. Um, you know, my mother's my manager, but uh, you know, we get a call and somebody wants to book a show, and the, you know, we get arrange the date, try to get that arranged, and we try to get the time and the place and the, how much, you know, how much we're going to charge, how much, you know, they're going to charge to have us there. And challenges, I mean, when you wake up and maybe you got a cold or a sore throat or something, it's, it makes it a little tough to sing. So you've got that challenge. You've got the challenge of trying to be somebody you're not and trying to portray somebody that to, is very, very difficult to portray, uh, trying to be Elvis. For the, for, your, for the fans and the people that you're performing for and waking up and, you know, being somebody, not, I mean, you tell the people that you're an Elvis tribute artist, they don't, they don't think much about that. You think they just, you dress up in white suit and go to birthday parties and, you know, that's, uh, you know, I've had, been laughed at a few times for that and, uh, you know, that's kind of one thing I have to deal with and I really didn't see the importance of it till one time I was in an, I was in a show in a nursing home, and uh, this little lady, you know, she hadn't really been in any activities in the nurse home. She'd just kind of been there and just, you know, waiting for her time, so to speak. And, uh, and I, you know, I started singing a song, and she came up, just, you know, started dancing with me right up there in front of everybody. And I think that was probably the first time somebody would seen her smile in a long time, and I think that was... That's kind of the point of it, you know. Love me tender, love me true, all magic so for my daughter. I love you and I always. Well, one of the best things that happened to me, I was in Branson a couple months back at a competition, Elvis competition, and I didn't place, but uh, Jerry Presley and his wife were there, that's Elvis's cousin, and after the show, they came up to me and told me that they thought I was one of the most authentic Elvises they'd ever seen, and that really hit home and most rewarding thing I think I've ever heard so far. And well, I was very blessed with my voice. I don't know why, but I was blessed. And uh, there's one thing that Elvis, everybody, you know, you can dress up like Elvis, that's easy. Or you can look like him, you can act, talk like him, anything you want. But the one thing I wanted to accomplish was I wanted to sound like him. Because it's something that wasn't real wide variety, something not a whole lot of people could do, and that's that's what I wanted to do. That's the one thing I want to try to hone down and keep going and get better at, and uh, just be the best I can be at his voice. And you know, try to look like him and everything, but do something that not a lot of whole other ETAs could do. And, I show up and we get ready for a show and I try to get in the try to get in the mood of being Elvis and uh, 
you know, picture myself walking out on the stage at the Ed Sullivan show and, you know, try to think that's me. And sometimes that gets me in the mood, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it makes it worse. But uh, just try to, you know, get those nerves up and get the butterflies out. And once they get up there, you know, you might as well because you ain't getting back down until you're done. So <laughs> I felt like they didn't. You know, I, we go to work. I go to work, and uh, we listen to music at work. And if I was working by myself, I may get to listen to Elvis. But other than that, you know, nobody, nobody else wanted to listen to his music. And so, kind of, not so much an outcast, but just that that other guy. You know, it. Uh, yeah, he's a cool guy and all, but we just don't want to listen to his music. You know, <laughs> it's kind of something like what Elvis was or did when he first sang. He came into Sun Studio first recording. The uh, receptionist asked him, you know, who do you sound like? And he said, I don't sound like nobody. So in my mind, it's if anybody asks me who I'm like, I'm not like anybody. I think that if there's something, you know, I'm very different from the people I, my, my friends and my family, but that's something I like to be. I like to be different. I like to be in a good way you know, in, in a good way, but I like to be different. I like to be something that do stuff that nobody's ever done, you know, accomplish things that no, never's been accomplished. And I think that's what, another reason what drug me into Elvis was, you know, nobody, nobody I'd ever known had ever sang Elvis or really even been a fan of Elvis, you know, 